17, 18 years. Um, and this is for both amendments. It makes no odds what you do. The, the problem of arguing about non allowing properties to be built on Greenfield where you produce a higher council tax increase. And there the arguments can pass before you just take them out of one area, you lose the income tax there, uh, sorry, the council tax there, and you pay it in somewhere else. You pay them a lot higher rate. That's the message that councillor, uh, that the, the mayor is talking about bringing in the extra income. And until we get a lot more higher value properties, which will produce increases in the, the band rate right across, but it will have a more detrimental effect to the higher band, and it will help the people in the lower band, because it will level that uh, counterbalance out. Until you do that, then you're going to keep having this problem in the number. While you've got slums, derelict buildings, we've got to do something about it. And that, if that means building a lot of space to increase that, then I've got no problem with it. One of the other things that Councillor Crohn says is about the car park. I don't know whether you ride a bike into town, you come in on a car, or you get a bus. As a car driver, I'll just ask anyone who's driven around the city centre over the last couple of years, trying to find a vacant car space for parking, how much fumes do you increase in the air by, by using it? And it's all I'd say is public transport, okay? You can't always get public transport at the time you want to take it to the place you want. That's why people use cars. So the, the, the actual building of the car park, and the mayor said it before, that car park was a liability waiting to happen. People going to the cars, falling over the way the sound like it, had pressed off. The way the, the roots had pushed the floor up. The way people were parking and kicking over into two bays. And, and I know people were actually being fined because they were taking two bays off. They were taking two bays off because the, the, the bank there, the, um, the roots, Pushed them all into a set of bags, we were done for it. So we had to do something with it. And unless we, it, what we've actually done is managed to get a building drop which will produce income to the council for the next 50, 60 years. Because that will be the lifespan of the building. And then again, we'll, we'll help everything that we've got. You talk about the, the savings that you put forward, and somebody has already said so, we'll go on too long. You've identified about 3.5 million. The deficit's 40 million. And it's always been said that when you come into the council on budget, 96% of everything that's going to get done, we all agree on. 2% comes to arrangements on you, you can move a little bit of a and it's 2% that are controversial. And that's all it is here. You have to be having a contact with or try to tackle any of them 2% that are the university. You've got to all the easy moves further down, which will make it up with the influence that you've got out. But one of the things you haven't included in there, Council Mitchell mentioned a couple of minutes ago, is the council tax um, help system that we have for the citizens of the If you honestly think you're going to go out and convince people to vote for 10% more, I mean, Joe was at a meeting where I was and he said, we've got nearly 50% open for just under 50% open in favour. I had to point out, we've got just under 50% open in favour. That means there's more than 50% open against it. And he said that we didn't do a big push on it. The people who answered it were the people who it would be affected by it. And they didn't bother. We just had the Brexit vote. It was 51%, 49%, not fair, fair about that. And it's made it across the country because people say you're trying to change the decision. I can guarantee you, from my experience, if you won't ask for a 10% increase, if you won't ask for a 10% increase, the people will laugh at you. <laughs> but the other knock-on effect of getting that 10% increase, you haven't even worked out what it would cost this council as additional money to put into the rate of the council tax subsidy that we pay. Because that would take people a lot higher. It means that they will have to find the so poorest people will be getting hit again on, on the thing that you're saying will help us out. It won't. Look into the figures, work them out, come back with something that actually adds up, and you might get some support. Because so far, what you put there, you waste, you're always arguing about saving trees. You just wasted the tree like that thing, are you? Thank you. 
Sometimes a saving is not necessarily a negative service. I use an example during the children's services review. Uh, I made, and I think uh, Councillor Jolly, when she was with the Lib Dems, made the suggestion. Um, some of the other councillors did. Why couldn't we share management across two children's centres and reduce the amount of money spent on administration and actually have a more cost effective service? Well, the outcome of that wasn't just cost saving <coughs> when we merged West Derby and Tubrook Children's Services. We actually had an outstanding offset recognising because the team was a bigger team often a diverse area, the team actually offered a better service and actually got more out of that service. So I use that as a simple example. A saving doesn't necessarily mean a more adverse service. Sometimes it actually means using money more effectively for the consumer. One of the service savings we've often said in children's services, every education community, which is why I think this amendment is wrong, was if we actually put more people into foster care rather than care homes, it would cost less. But all the stats show it's a better service for the children. So are the Greens against that? Have they been at the education committee and listened to that point making? And as for reducing the member fund, I made no apologies. How long has a uh, reasonable Debt advice, we used it for community skits, which improve the street scene in our ward. We've used it to provide youth services, and we've used it to stimulate other investments that actually bring in more money and use the work of volunteers and voluntary agencies. And I cannot comprehend why the Green Party has got an obsession in tackling local democracy being put in place. I find that astounding for a party that calls it green. It's almost as perverse as greens avoiding opposing lockdowns. I just don't get it. <laughs> and, and one of the one of the things yeah. that we just in our work board was we actually paid for anybody who wanted to have a compost bin and collect them. It reduced the amount of waste in our ward, which is a saving, it's an investor save, and it helped the green environment. And that's the sort of thing. Green Amendment would be bar. I don't get it, it don't make sense, and I think it's really disappointing. I think we've also got to be honest, the small opposition parties to actually create budget amendments is hard work, it is difficult, and the amount of information we have access to is less. But I think we're going to do an amendment, let's make one more. Thank you. Just very briefly, really, because it's around children's services, just so it's really clear what we're doing. The, children, the reason why this is a saving in children's services is for two simple reasons. One is, we, as an authority, we don't run our own children's home. We are totally dependent on the prices that non local authority organisations are levying us to place our children. And a lot of those organisations are national companies that have got no local relationship. And just to give you an example, there's one young man who's in um, our respite care at the moment, where we've been offered a place for him that we can't provide it in the city. It will cost this city, if we don't find an alternative, £480,000 a year. So we can't sustain that. And if, even if we have loads of money, we shouldn't be using taxpayers' money in that way. So we have to find other ways of doing it by building, by creating our own residential <coughs> children's homes and providing our own services and having a mixed economy so that we can better control the prices around residential care, which is what we're going to do. The other point is around foster care. Most of the, because we don't have enough uh, registered foster carers with local city council, we've got no choice but to be dependent on largely <coughs> private foster care agencies. And the no the, the most significant of those that cost us the most money, again, I have to <coughs> One that I could name, and I'm not going to name Fostering Solutions, but they turn over £114 million pounds a year. They're part of the group called Acorn Care. They have 41 subsidiaries. They're owned by three directors, every single one of those companies. The money that they generate from foster care, they 
used to issue euro bonds, believe it or not. So it's on its we cannot, it's not right, it sits uncomfortably with me, that we should be paying for foster care to organisations that are making an excessive or unnecessary profit out of the vulnerability of our children. So the reason why that saving is in there, particularly in 2017-18, is because we have to move, and you can help us with this, and people in the city can help us with this. We have to recruit our own foster carers. We have to persuade foster carers that are registered with private agencies to come over to us. They will get all the support and more that they get from any other organisation. They'll get free council tax that pay, they'll get the council tax paid for them. They have 24 7 support. They have annual training. There's nothing that they get that they won't get with other organisations. The difference is it will cost us half as much as it does to pay the other agencies. So in sympathy with what Councillor Mitchell is saying, it will help you to remove the amendment. That is an explanation for what we're doing in children's services. And I think it would be good for you to support this budget and remove the amendment as Councillor Mitchell is saying. A premium service, a fact 